How are you feeling this morning? Good, yeah, excellent. Good job. What if I'm Good, good figures, though. It just showed you covered everything, hasn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good job. Yeah. Means you broke even and you've worked it out well, hasn't it? Good job. Just unmute, unmute Marilyn. Well, hello. We've got new stuff this morning. As you can see, we've got our music group. Yeah, very good. <laughs> right, well, a good morning and a very warm welcome to you all here in church and those participating on Zoom. If this is your first time here, a special welcome to you. 
My name is Marilyn, and together we will enjoy our worship here in God's house. The words of the service will appear on the screens, and all you need really is a Bible to follow the reading. So let's pray and give the service over to God. Heavenly Father, we pray earnestly as we pray and praise you and read from your holy word that we may become more aware of your plans for us and that we may become more like your holy son, Jesus Christ, who obeyed you in everything, even in his death. May we be transformed to be as your disciples, spreading the gospel at any God-given opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, our vision topic uh, today is prayerful. You can see it on our board in the uh, on on the wall. And um, I think that without prayer, we cannot communicate with our Lord. The two-way dialogue is just not there. One Thessalonians chapter five verses sixteen to eighteen states that we must rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And Martin Luther goes so far as to say that to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Something to ponder on, I think. Opening worship, uh, blessed be your name. <laughs> And you are really worth um, the all of our worship, of your worth, blessing, the one who said, Blessed be your name. It is a truth that you are above all and high Lord and great and all. This is no one after you. We thank you for what you've done for us and that you truly want our hearts. We want to worship you this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, that you'd help us understand your word, that you would open our eyes to the truth that needs that prevents us from being deceived by lies, and that we'd know the truth that sets us free. In Jesus' name, Amen. Um, so I wonder uh, what you said earlier. Have you heard the? Uh, I heard the uh, saying, "Ship off your block." Are you like your parents? Do you think of ways like you like your parents? Any examples? I tell really bad dad jokes like my dad's. And uh, my kids have started telling them as well. So, uh, so one of my, we, we, we got a lot of songs from um, the ladies um, event last week. And my favourite joke at the moment is what's the fastest cake? Scone. Um, and my kids have started telling that joke. <laughs> Poor kids. But maybe you look at your parents, maybe you look at your kids, you see the similarities, not just uh, in the way you look, it's how you look, isn't it? But 
but also just from a personality. You see a bit of you uh, in your children. And uh, I've got some sort of famous families uh, there. So you've got Harry Potter up here, a famous and powerful wizard, uh, just like his mum and dad. Um, you've got Simba there, grown up to be king, just like his uh, father. Uh, you've got the Adams family, and the parents are a bit weird, aren't they? And um, so are the kids. Uh, and anyone know who that is up there? Indiana Jones uh, and his dad. So, so often we, we're, we're like our parents, aren't we? We may look a bit uh, like our parents. And that is true uh, spiritually as much uh, as physically uh, and personality wise, isn't it? Uh, I always, I'm always amazed that um, you look at the statistics and it's children who have grown up with parents who are keen Christians, regular church, really keen. They're the ones that often. Um, um, Christians as they get older, there's an effect um, there. And in this passage, that's one of the things he's saying is a pretty controversial passage. He tells us that every single one of us, every single person here, is going to have one of two spiritual fathers. Every single person in this world has one of two fathers, spiritually speaking. He says either we're children of God, or were children of the devil. Did you see that in verse 42? <laughs> Jesus said to him, if, I were your, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now I'm here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. Now that God is our father, or the yeah, devil is, that's what Jesus is saying, saying here. And the, and the thing, thing that makes a difference, Jesus tells us, is the way we respond to him. The way we respond to Jesus is the difference between being a child of God or a child of the devil. And so we're going to look through what he says in more detail uh, now. And the first thing we're going to uh, look at is what it means to be a child of God. Um, just have a look at verse 35. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We saw, if you were here last week, and we're all we had a look at these verses, and we saw that to be a child of God means to be free from sin, to have a permanent place in God's family, and to live out the freedom we, uh, we obey Jesus. So we see, so we see now that the children of God love Jesus and follow his truth. So verse 42 again. If God were your father, you would love me. We have uh, quite a lot of sibling rivalry in the uh, Anderson household. Uh, this morning, it was... Uh, Naomi's got my balloon. I said, you've got a balloon, Ezra. She's got a balloon. What's the problem? Her balloon's bigger than my balloon. <laughs> um, they fight sometimes. They don't always get on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, our kids love each other. One of them's upset. The other one, I can't give them a big cuddle. Uh, they love each other. Naomi loves her big brother because they're part of the same family. And here, and here we see that, that as Christians, Jesus is our big brother. brother. Because we're all part of the same family for Christians. He is the son of God. And when we trust Jesus, we become sons and daughters of God. We are part of God's family if we trust Jesus, if we love our big brother Jesus. Jesus says... If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and now I'm here. One of uh, the dangers uh, of religion is religion that sometimes acknowledges God, but doesn't actually know much of Jesus. So lots of people might say they believe they believe in God, but actually Jesus is saying here, without Without that faith in him, without the look of Jesus, that belief is, is empty. 
Spirituality without Jesus is not Christianity. Trying to serve God without love for Jesus is actually slavery, it's not sonship. So we must always remember, always remember as Christians that Christ is to be at the centre. That's our, uh, our value right at the top there, isn't it? We want to be Jesus-centred, Jesus at the top. We want to make much of Jesus. We want to love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? He loves you. He loves you enough to leave the glory of heaven for you and enter into the mess of this world. He loves you enough to experience heartbreak and temptation and suffering for you. He loves you enough to die on a cross for you. And the pain of the cross wasn't just the physical pain, but the spiritual pain of pain for our sins, the sins that separate us from God, the sins that mean we can't be part of God's family, the sins that deserve punishment. And God took that on the cross so we can be children of God. Our big brother Jesus loves us. And children of God love Jesus. <laughs> it always gets me at the end of John's Gospel. Um, and you know, Peter, Peter, who disowned Jesus three times, and he's there, he's there fishing, isn't he? And he's not seen Jesus really. Not, not, we've not heard him talk to Jesus properly since Jesus was resurrected. And, and Jesus calls him. And what's the one question that Peter asked, uh, that Jesus asked Peter? Do you love me? Never mind anything else. Do you love me? You see, if you love Jesus, everything else follows. Peter, Peter's life is testament to that. He ultimately ended up giving up his life because he loved Jesus. Children of God love Jesus. And that means children of God follow his truth. They do what he says. So uh, look at verse 31. To the Jews who believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's lots of uh, different understandings of truth in our society. Uh, we have objective truth, absolute truth, and we have su subjective truth, uh, sort of in opinion, interpretation. Let me give you some examples. Uh, England won the football match against the Netherlands on Wednesday night. That's objective truth, isn't it? That's true, it happened. Jude Bellingham played really well. That's subjective truth, that's an opinion, isn't it? Harry Kane scored a penalty. Objective truth, it happened. Harry Kane should have been awarded the penalty. <laughs> mm. Opinions are divided. And so the question is, when Jesus speaks, is it objective truth, England won? Or subjective truth? You think it was a penalty? Is it absolute? Or is it just an interpretation? Well, look at verse 37. He says, I know you're Abraham's descendants. You're ready to kill me because you have no room for my words. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence. So what's Jesus saying there? He's saying, my truth that I am sharing, not my interpretation. This is truth directly from the Father. This is God's truth. This is objective truth, absolute truth, truth, truth. Jesus' words, his teaching is absolute truth. And so God's children will want to follow Jesus' teaching, his truth. You might have um, heard the saying nowadays, you've got to follow your own truth. You heard that? <laughs> this is your own truth? And actually for Christians, that's, that's rubbish. That is selfish, individualistic nonsense. God's children 
follow Jesus's truth. That is the truth that matters. So let me ask you a question. Uh, when was the last time you let Jesus disagree with you? Um, when was the last time you opened up your Bible and read something that you didn't agree with and thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my opinions to the side and I'm going to follow Jesus' truth because he loves me. And that is going to be harder and harder in a society that drifts away from the anchor of God's word in the Bible. So as our society's value drift away from the Bible and Jesus' teaching, well, the danger is we become more like our society than follow Jesus' teaching in the Bible. Let me give you some examples. When was the last time you saw an advert about humility, about being humble, about putting others above yourself? You don't get that in our society, but that is a key teaching of Jesus, isn't it? When was the last time you saw an advert about generosity, about giving your money away rather than using it to spend stuff on yourself. You won't. But that is a key teaching of Jesus. When was the last time you saw chastity advertised? That sexual sin is serious, that we need to celebrate the goodness of marriage between a man and a woman. That we need to resist all temptation. You won't see the adverse about that, will you? Because our society is so far from Jesus' words. When was the last time you saw an advert about worship? About setting aside a day a week to praise Jesus, to learn from him, to meet with his family, to rest in him. You won't see adverts like that. But again, that is a key part of Jesus' teaching. And so as children of God, we, we don't want to be swayed by the world around us. We want to follow Jesus' truth. Because God's children love Jesus and follow his truth. They want to obey him, not our culture. They want to be led by him. And maybe you're here this morning and you're still trying to work out if you can trust Jesus. If he really does speak truth. And if that's you, it's brilliant that you're here. I'm glad you're here. Can I encourage you to join that Christianity Explored course in September? That's a really good way of exploring his claims. Is he trustworthy? Can I put my life in his hands? Can I learn to love him and follow his truth? So children of God, love Jesus and follow his truth. But the, then Jesus goes on to tell us not everyone is a child of God. Maybe that's... Um, a shock to some. We like to think everyone's a child of God. But Jesus says, no, not everyone is a child of God. Not everyone loves Jesus and follows his truth. And the shock here is that Jesus turns to these very powerful, very religious, very respected leaders. And he says to them, you are children of the devil. Did you see that in verse 44? He says to these religious leaders, you belong to your father, the devil. And the reason is children of the devil reject Jesus and follow lies. That's what we're told here. Children of the devil reject Jesus and follow lies. Jesus has already said to them that um, they can become sons. He can set them free. But they say to him, we're, we're not slaves. We don't need to be set free. Then Jesus says, no, but you can become a son of God. You can, you can become children of the Father. And what do they say in verse 39? Abraham is our father, they answered. What they're doing there is that they're standing on their religious heritage. They're standing on their religious background. They're trusting that because they're descended from Abraham, because they're part of the Jewish nation, they've, they've received the promises of God as a nation, that they're fine, that they're free, that they don't need saving by Jesus. 
But look what Jesus says in verse 39. He says, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things Abraham did. And what did Abraham do? He trusted God's promises that are ultimately pointing to Jesus. See, it's not about heritage, Jesus says. It's about how you respond to him. That's what's key. Now, we live in quite a traditional uh, area of the country. There's lots of people would say they're Christians because their parents or grandparents were Christians because they're baptised. But Jesus warns us that just simply standing on our religious heritage isn't enough. We need personal, genuine faith in Jesus. We need faith that trusts God's promises. So to have the faith of Abraham is to love Jesus, to follow his truth. But they refuse to do that, don't they? Verse 41. <clears throat> We're not illegitimate, illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God, God himself. They said, God's our father. And Jesus says, no, he isn't. If God were your father, you would love me. And yet they reject him. They're trying to kill him. Verse 44, you belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Just like their father, they're trying to kill Jesus. I think what Jesus is referring to here is uh, Genesis 4. Uh, you remember the story of Cain and Abel? Um, and, and what happens is uh, Cain, he's made a half-hearted sacrifice to God. He, he's got the religion, but his heart isn't in it. He doesn't love God. And God rejects his offering. Cain gets angry. And God says to him, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. And sadly, Cain gives in to sin. He murders his brother. And ultimately, Satan is behind that. Because Satan hates God's people. He hates Jesus. He wants them dead. The children of the devil reject Jesus. They won't rid of him. And that verse is, is, is picked up in 1 Peter, where Peter says to Christians... Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. I'm sure everyone here has uh, watched David Attenborough um, programmes. He's been doing it for like 50 years, hasn't he? Um, have you seen like a, a lion? They prowl about, don't they? And you can hardly see them, they're sort, of, they're sort of camouflaged in, they're dangerous. And what they do is they prowl about and they look for that youngster, don't they? That, that weak deer or gazelle or whatever it is. The one that's not, not strong, the one that's easy prey. And they prowl around and once it gets separated from the rest, uh, it pounces and devours it. And that's what Peter in that verse was saying, the devil's like. You're not reading your Bible. You're not coming to church regularly. You're not worshipping God. You're not meeting with other Christians and praying. He sees that. That's the weak one. That's the one I'm going to get. Prowls around. He tries to separate you from your brothers and sisters. And he pounces. And so, so Peter says, be alert. Be, be of sober mind. Be on your guard. Because he's a murderer. And one of the ways that, that Satan tempts us as well. Is he tempts us with lies. So children of the devil reject Jesus. They also follow lies. So have a look again at verse 44. 
You belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding for the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Uh, Naomi um, uh, was reading Genesis and she, uh, she was reading a little Bible about Satan tempting them in the garden and she was getting a bit scared of, of Satan and actually what we explained to her is, is if you're a Christian you don't need to be scared the, there's only one weapon Satan has against you ultimately if you're a Christian and that's lies and so what we call Satan in our house is liar, liar, pants on fire. We say the devil is a liar, liar, pants on fire. Don't believe him. That's his greatest weapon, lies. He's a deceiver. Um, it, it made me think of Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. Okay. And Sauron, the reason he gets so powerful isn't because he's so strong. It's because he's so deceptive. He's a deceiver. So, so in Lord of the Rings, he makes that one ring to rule them all in secret, doesn't he? He deceives them and then has power over them. And if you're a massive geek and you read the Cimmerillion and, and other things, he deceives all the way through. At one point, he makes them think he's, he's turned good and they let him go. And then he causes havoc again. Satan is a deceiver. It started in the Garden of Eden, didn't it? So in the Garden of Eden, Satan says to Adam and Eve, he, he makes them doubt God's goodness. He, sa he says, God's holding back on you. That's why he doesn't want you to eat that, 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 that fruit. God's not good. He's, 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 he's holding back on you. He makes them doubt God's word. He says, did God really say? God's given them a really clear word. We've got really clear words in the Bible. And Satan goes, oh, you can't, you can't believe that. Did God really say? And he's up to the same tricks now. You read in T Corinthians 11, the Satan masquerades as an angel of light. And so it's not surprising his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. So there'll be people who look the part, who look godly and holy. But they're teaching lies and Satan's behind that. Or 2 Corinthians 4, the God of this age, this is Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they can't see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. He obscures the truth so that people can't see Jesus. He's a, he's a deceiver. He's a liar. Maybe we're tempted to follow those lies when we sin. We start to believe that God's way isn't the best, that he's holding back on us, that, that he's spoiling our fun. And so we give in to temptation. Or maybe, or maybe we, we believe the lies of Satan when he says to us, you're, you're too bad. You've done too many bad things. God couldn't love you. You're not good enough for God. He doesn't want you as his child. That's Satan talking. He's lying to us. He's making us doubt God's goodness, his fatherly care. Don't believe his lies. And you know what? As I reflect on this, I was so glad that Jesus didn't give in to Satan's lies. That when Satan tempted Jesus to sin, Jesus held firm. When Satan uh, tempted Jesus to take the easy routes to glory, Jesus instead chose to go to the cross, to die for you, to die for me, uh, to forgive our sins. I'm so glad that at the cross, Jesus disarmed Satan. That Jesus is the strong man who is stronger than Satan. And that Jesus protects his people from Satan. What a great saviour we have. Let's hold to Jesus' words. His teaching is true. Stick with it. Don't be drawn away.
And I say this just under a week after the majority of the bishops in the Church of England voted to bless something that is contrary to God's words. And isn't it not surprising? Isn't it interesting that in John 8 it is the religious leaders who look respectable and powerful and Jesus says, you're the one who will believe in lies. You're leading the people astray. And that is happening in the Church of England at the moment. Not our bishops, thankfully, in Blackburn, um, but more widely in the nation. Let's stick to God's words. It is tr truth. Don't believe the lies of Satan. So children of God and children of the devil, children of God love Jesus. They follow his truth, even though it's hard and countercultural. The children of the devil reject Jesus. They follow lies. Jesus has no time for them. He, he says, resist them. So the question we're left with is, who do we want our father to be? Who do we belong to? Verse 47, he who belongs to God, hears what God says. But the reason you do not hear is you do not belong to God. How will we respond to Jesus? Uh, just leave you with this quote from Tim Keller. He says, Jesus cannot be just liked. His claims make us either kill him or crown him. Either we love him or we'll reject him. Either we'll take his word seriously and live in the light of it, or we'll believe the lies of the devil. You can't sit on the fence forever. How will we respond to Jesus? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that Jesus offers us sonship. We can be children of God through him. Jesus can be our big brother. We can be free. And we can be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you that you warn us. Please help us to make much of Jesus and to rejoice and enjoy being his children. Amen. We're going to uh, pray now. Thank you for to uh, be ready to pray. Let us pray. We give thanks, O oh God our Father, for the many blessings of this life, for health and strength and all our powers of body and mind, for our homes and loved ones, and for the wonderful joy of our friendship, for our work and the opportunities of service, for the beauty of the world of nature, for the kindness, generosity and sympathy shown to us by so many along life's journey. Give us thankful hearts, Lord, for all your goodness, and help us by the way we live to repay some of the debt we owe. For the sake of him who came, not to be served, but to serve, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we have called your people to shine as lights in the world. We pray for our fellow Christians who bear their witness in difficult places and for those who suffer persecution and imprisonment for the gospel's sake. Uphold their faith, bless their testimony, give them freedom of spirit and cause your word everywhere to speak on in triumph. For the honour of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy, amen.
Dear Father, hear the prayer we pray. Give us courage every day. Send your love and healing too for everything we have to do. When the future's looking bleak, let us find the hope we seek. Wrap us safely in your care and show us you are always there. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, whose Son Jesus Christ was manifested amid the darkness of the world as the light of life, we pray that his light may so shine among the nations that all peoples may come to know him, worship him, and serve him, to whom be glory now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear my prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, yours is the kingdom, an earthly kingdom where the king comes riding on a donkey, a heavenly kingdom where the lowly are exalted and the mighty brought low. An eternal kingdom where nothing, not sin nor death, can separate us from the love of God. Yours is the power, the power to forgive our trespasses and wipe the slate clean, the power to pay the debt of our sin so that we can be free, the power to restore and heal the brokenness of our world. Yours is the glory the glory of the Almighty Heavenly Father, the glory of the Son, whom death could not hold down, the glory of the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us forever and ever. Amen. Father of all, we are your family, and you call us to live together as brothers. Help us to overcome the barriers that divide us as men and nations from one another. Bless every effort being made to bring peace and understanding to the world so that we may learn your ways and serve your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, we pray for King Charles. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray for those who represent us in the Parliament of our nation, particularly in this time of change. Amid all the pressures brought upon them, may they follow your guidance and seek to do the thing that is right, that through them your will may be done for this nation, to the honour of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for our churches, St. Bartholomew's and Church of the Saviour. We thank you for Chris, our vicar, James, our associate minister, Jeff, Duncan, Phil and John, our lay ministers, our church wardens and PCCs, and for our local bishops, Philip and Jim. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God of love, we commend to your merciful care and healing grace those whom we now remember in our prayers, and we ask that we, you do for them all that is best according to their needs and according to your will. Bless all that is being done for their good and surround them with your healing love and power for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, and we think today especially of John and family, Lorraine and Jed, Yvonne and Graham, Duncan and Jackie, Maud, Catherine, Lynn, Sylvia, Ben, Sandra, Bill, Laura, Marlene, Frank and Tony, Mark, Helen Stebbins, Kay, Keith, Christine, John Dewhurst, Gillian and Brian, Ruth, Howard, Lorraine, Kath, Kathleen and Toby. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. Dear Lord, embracing your loving arms, all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, 
be with them in their sorrow, uphold them with your strength, and through the generosity of love shown by others and your presence within their hearts, may they know that they are not alone in their grief and suffering. And this we ask in your precious name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Alison. If our young people uh, want to come back in, now we're going to share in the Lord's Supper together. Oh, have you got something to show us? You want to stand stand across the front and show us what you've got? Stand at the front. Yeah. You can. Okay. What have you got? Okay, you've got some grapes. Let me guess. Let, let's see if people can guess. There's grapes, there's figs. What are they doing there? Carrying five, five grapes, possibly? Your memory verse is, the Lord is with us, do you not fear? Can anyone remember what you learned about? Yes, wait a minute. Go on, tell me. Brilliant. Excellent. Give him a clap. I think it's great that in our Sunday school they're learning from the Bible and they're learning from the book of Numbers. Anyone know what goes on in Numbers? Yeah? There is learning the whole Bible. What is joy? Um, and our, uh, our older teenagers are so keen. They're still learning, so there we go. That's it. And we're going to share in the Lord's Supper uh, together now. We, we uh, tend to celebrate communion uh, at St. Bartholomew's on the second Sunday of, of each month. Um, third Sunday of Church of the Savior as well. The other Sundays in the evening service. And really, as we share the Lord's Supper, we're reminded of God's love for us. Like he sent his son uh, to die for us. And we respond as we accept it by faith in love for him. So if you'd like to go again, play the words in black. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We will return to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us. Who came to meet us in your soul. May Christ be the of the children and welcome us to sit and eat with him. Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened my eyes to dance of love on the cross and they call all the great things The night he was betrayed at supper with friends, he took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, they take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, you do this in remembrance of me. His blood was shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us body and blood of your dear Son. Speak and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and Heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Let's take it to us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. So in a moment, if you'd like to uh, come to the front, for those who'd like to receive uh, the bread and the wine separately, uh, you come round this side. Margaret, do you have the wine? Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, and if you'd like the bread and the wine, uh, if you'd like the bread dipped into the wine, uh, for hygiene reasons, do come to me on this side. If you're child, you'd love to pray for the children. If you're not sure where you are, Christ, if you're not sure you're trusting in Jesus, and then you're baptized, uh, confirmed in that sense. Just, uh, just cross your arms. Uh, we'd love to pray for you. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. His blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remember that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith. that 
every stain of sin shed for you. Drink and remember, he drained death's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of God. So we share. So let's uh, pray, committing ourselves to God's service. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we are feeding our souls and hearts to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live as his word. Hand over to our, uh, our finance.
Jesus Christ. Our closing prayer. Father God, as we leave this church, may we step out in faith to follow you in all things, to be the people you want us to be, to commune with you by daily prayer, and to grow more like your Holy Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. By the power of your spirit, may we be the standard bearers for the Christian faith in the coming week and act with love and kindness to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand while you're standing. <laughs> Let's say the grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Let's have uh, some refreshments and fellowship. Yeah. Thank you. I believe in Christ, risen from the dead. He now reigns victorious, his kingdom knows no end. Through his resurrection, death has lost its hold. I know on that final day, I'll rise as Jesus rose. On that day, I'll see you shine brighter than the sun. On that day, we will know you as we lift our voices one. Till that day. We will praise you for your never-ending grace, and we will keep on singing on that glorious day. What a blessed hope, so now tired and worn, we will spend eternity around our Throne. Though we grieve